That's my service? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will start with the background to my, to my persona, then I tell you one or two things about our company, then we go to the management problem, because you probably heard a lot about Crypto Nation Switzerland, Crypto Valley in Zoo, all the advantage and all that stuff, and I will show you a few of the challenges we had uh, along the way. Um, I personally did my studies in finance in Switzerland, and then worked at two family offices once at the hedge fund side and then private equity, and later at investment banks, UBS, SOCGEN, and the David Sales. <laughs> then I got self employed. Stop, stop. <laughs> 네, 우선 프레젠테이션은 저 일단 배경 그리고 어, 크립토 밸리에 대한 그런 설명들이 있을 수 있겠고요. 그리고 이분이 이분의 경력에 대해서 설명을 드리자면 UBS라지 쉐네스 아, 제가 이 회사 이름 잘못 들었는데요. 예, 보고 관련해서 일하신 파이낸스 전문가이십니다. Okay, then I go to Basel. I founded a company together with a co-founder where we first did brokerage and investment management in the traditional world and then last year we founded Token Swiss Capital. I mean... <laughs> 어, 지금 작년에 어, 이분과 함께 그 어떤 동반자 파트너 분을 파트너 회사를 찾아서요. 어, 지난 작년에 회사를 발견을 했는데요. 설립을 했다라고 말씀드리는 게 정확하겠죠? 어, 이름은 토큰 스위스입니다. I mean, we basically at Token Swiss, we have three business lines that evolved over the last 12 months. We have nine employees. The three business lines on one side is asset management. The idea behind it is basically our old clients, the family office, banks, all that, they had trouble to get exposure to crypto assets and do crypto asset management. So we found the data solution. We launched the world's first multi-crypto asset certificate. Like it's a byte and byte and it's too long and it's difficult to okay. translate. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, 지금 이 회사는요 아홉 명의 사람으로 구성이 되어 있고요. 크립토 매니지먼트 관련한 일을 사업을 하고 계십니다. 크립토 어셋 매니지먼트요. Yes. And then based on that setup, we took, we had last year a lot of companies that did ICOs, new companies, old companies. And we found out they had a lot of trouble basically get the basic banking relationship and manage basically the cryptos into fiat to basically pay the salaries because the salaries still need to be paid in US dollar, the rent needs to be paid in US dollar and other cryptos. So we basically have a trading where we just exchange crypto against crypto and fiat against crypto. And then the third. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 지난 작년에 많은 그 문제가 있는 많은 회사들을 찾아냈습니다. 뭐 은행과 물려 문제가 있다랄지 피앗 머니라고 실물 화폐가 되나요? 예, 그런 관련해서 크립토 크립토 어셋과 관련된 문제가 있는 많은 회사들을 발견을 했습니다. And the third one is basically consulting. I mean, in the consulting, I mean, there's uh, in Korea, I think an insurance company called Hanwha Life Insurance Company. Oh, yeah. our life. I mean, they were lost. Yeah. Yeah. We, we worked with them last year together as they wanted to learn a bit more about crypto nation um, in Switzerland and also in Zug. We, we, we did some exchange with their management. We're also working with the German bank that got bought by basically a, or a, a crypto companies investing. We're helping them with the regulator to go through KYC. And another project we're working on is like EFIN, that's a decentralized exchange that should launch in Switzerland. So you see, we, we do a lot across the value chain of crypto space. And as we already know, I mean, Switzerland, the crypto nation, seems to be very popular. We have a lot of knowledge, the university, we have a good regulatory framework, as you learned. I mean, Switzerland wants to establish it. But in Switzerland, as we are like a banking uh, nation, Every company that basically gets incorporated in Switzerland has the need of a bank account. A bank account to do simple payment like salary, rent, and so on. 
네, 많은 회사가 스위스 어, 은행 계좌를 갖고 있는데요. 뭐 간단한 거가 있겠죠. 간단한 어떤 트랜잭션이랄지 아니면 셀러리 관리랄지 그런 것들이 있을 수 있겠습니다. And in Switzerland, we have at the moment no bank that is really open to do business with companies that are 100% focused on crypto. So, I mean, Zuber Canton All Bank, that's a printout out of their, um, their homepage, and it's the bank in the crypto valley. They say they won't want to do, have anything to do with companies that do ICOs or involved in crypto assets. We know of startups that talk to over 50 banks in Switzerland to get a bank account. It's still not working out. 네, 그 시작을 하실 때요, 50개의 은행과 크립토 관련한 그런 어떤 계좌를 오픈해 줄 것을 요청을 했답니다. 하지만 이렇게 모두 모든 은행에서 거절을 당했습니다. So you see a bit the problem. We have the politicians and the regulatory framework, which is very friendly for that business, but at the other side, a necessary piece of the infrastructure, banks are missing. 예, 정치나 어떤 그 인프라스트럭처 관련해서는요, 어, 이 크립토에 관련해서 매우 우, 우호적인데요. 하지만 은행은 그렇지 않습니다. If they have any questions, they just shall answer. 네, 저, 저, 만약에 그 프레젠테이션 하시는 중에 질문 있으시면 중단하셔도 됩니다. So what, what's the reason for, for, for banks that they don't want to get involved with, with this kind of technology in your asset class or whatever you're going to frame it? But basically, it will always come down to this. I mean, Martin has already talked about it, but it will basically come down to the usual three suspects. I mean, it always comes basically down this. Uh, there are three, four things you need to do. You always need to identify who you actually do business. So if you do not ICO or you sell a coin to someone, you just need to make sure you know whose identity behind it. Then the other one, at the same time, is you need to understand where the domicile is of the person. Is it the person that's in Switzerland based? Is the person that's in Asia? Is the person in Germany or in the US? Why is that important? Different games or different rules and regulatory apply where you domiciled. 그 확인을 맨 처음에 이제 확인을 해야 될 사항이 있는데요. 어 이제 사람들의 그 신분 같은 거를 확인을 해야 되고요. 그리고 이제 나라마다 어 어떤 그런 은행 같은 시스템이 다 다르기 때문에 어디 출신이고 어디에서 왔고 그런 우리 다 다릅니다. 그런 거에 대한 예. And the source of funds or the identification of the beneficial owner. That means basically the person that brings you the money or the invest in your company needs to be able to reasonably show where the money is coming from and he actually earned it in a legal way. 네, 그, 그 돈의 출처에 관련, 관련된 것입니다. 어, 투자를 어떤 사람이 하고 그리고 이제 그게 법률적으로 문제가 없는지에 관한 투자 출처에 대한 의심이 있을 수 있겠습니다. And that's basically these requirements, the usual suspect, KYC, anti-money laundering, and the beneficial only. That's basically every bank needs to do that. If you deposit US dollar, if you open up a new account, that needs to be done anyway, anytime if you have to deal with uh, monetary resources. I mean, another reason which we think is a bit more actual is basically when you think about the blockchain movement and the possibility that cryptos provide, they allow you to be your own bank. It's not just a crypto, it's not comparable to a Swiss bank account, it's basically allowing you to be your own Swiss bank at the end of the day. And with this new kind of technology and the movement, you basically changing or forcing their business model to change. So they have a conflict of interest to actually deal with kind of blockchain companies. <laughs> 커스터머가 누구인지 아니면 이제 돈 세탁 문제 아니면 그 돈의 출처 투자 금액의 출처 이런 이런 거에 그런 어떤 일상적인 의심을 그 일반 은행들이 갖고 있기 때문에 어 그래서 이제 이분들이 이제 제안을 드리는 거는 어 이렇게 블록체인 화해 회사나 그 프로, 크립토 벨리 크립토 관련 이런 회사들이 그 일반 은행이 아니라 고유의 은행을 가질 것을 권유합니다. So, what's another problem? I mean, I think a big problem is basically coming to a certain degree. It's not Switzerland 
we can exclude that a little bit. But if you look how the, the, the discussion is dominated in, in, in Europe or in the US or like an international com, um, organization like the UN, the OECD and the some of the other one, you, you, you just, most of the, of these politicians or regulators just say like cryptocurrency is only used for illicit activities. I just wanted to show you two stuff. I mean, one, one thing is a study that came out last year from the U.S. Treasury. And they clearly stated that most illicit activities are done in the US dollar. And, the, and this chart here, which came out in February this year, is from the UK Treasury. They basically did an analysis of various ways to launder money, basically, and then scored them according to vulnerability and the likelihood. And it's, it's really interesting just to see that the discussion is not really fairly done. The most dangerous and most used way to launder money, it's just banks. It's just a reality. And the, the most secure, they use digital currency, but they're basically made of crypto assets. So. It's basically the opposite, like the banks that are very scared about people using cryptocurrency to loan the money, it's not really the cryptocurrencies that are the problem, it's much more like the banking system, how it works or not works at the moment. So, when we know our business, because we take crypto money from cryptos from companies as well as, as fiat money, so we basically have to do, how you do the due diligence of that? that that's an important okay, question. So, you basically have to think about it, you have two parts, if you deal in the fiat world and in the crypto world. Okay. That's on the fiat part. On the right side, you just see some headlines that even the banks that have existing a long time still have some problem according to, 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 to hold up the regulation needed to prevent money laundering. And here you basically see the legal requirements if you do onboard a legal entity. A legal entity at the end of the day is just a corporation. And that's what you need to do if you onboard an individual or like a private person. This year is exactly the same thing every bank will do if you open up an account with them. Now comes a bit more scary part, the onboarding of the crypto assets. I mean, we are working with like three companies here together. And they, their company basically, if you think about the blockchain, the blockchain is nothing else than a very transparent ledger where you see basically every transaction. So banks often tell you, we don't know where the money is coming from, which is actually an absurd statement if you think you have a ledger which is 100% publicly and everybody can more or less see where the transaction went. So the question is not really if it's transparent or not. The question is how do you actually do some kind of forensic analysis on this kind of blockchain. And chain analysis is probably the most well-known company around there. They were involved in the, in the takedown of Silk Road. It was the billion plus 
dark web market that sold a lot of drugs. And they're working together, you see it, with the FBA, with the DA, Homeland Security, and so on. And then you have some other companies as well. But what they basically do, they look at the ledger of all the transactions. And if you have public in the internet, public addresses or keys, which are used as payment instruments for illegal goods, everybody thinks them that more or less can use Google. So the question is, we know to a certain degree which addresses are out there or not. So now you have a, more or less a ledger with everything, all the transaction on it. What they basically doing, they put a distribution over all transaction. Sorry, go back. Okay. Yeah. Now, what, what, what these tools basically do, these three companies, they work together with governments, tax agency, military in, information agency, whatever. What they basically do, they have a list of addresses that are known for illicit stuff. On the other stuff, what they basically do, they take your Bitcoin and then go back one transaction. Where has it been? One back, one back, one back. They basically reverse engineer as for possible all the, all the transactions and put the distribution over it. 네, 이 세계의 그 서비스 프로바이더 회사에 관한 사항인데요. 그 어떤 뱅크의 트랜섹션 관련해서 어, 이런 흐름 같은 것을 이세 세 회사에서 담당하고 있습니다. And then at the end of the day, you see it differently. They provide you a nice support, they just give you a scoring, and then you basically see. If you in between around 50% score, that just means it's not very sure it could be what it is. 네, But if, 50%, on the other stuff, if you if you go on to the left side in the red part, 그 보시면요, it's bad. That means you bitcoins that you send to us as company has been used on a lot of illegal or illicit addresses. And the other side, if you on the green one, it, it's clean money. It's the same thing as if you send money from the UBS to the Credit Suisse. No problem at all. 녹색 관련해서는요 어, 깨끗한 돈이라고 보시면 되겠는데요 어떤 트랜잭션이 UBS나 어떤 프레디스위스와 같은 은행을 통해서 거래가 된다고 보시면 되겠습니다. So if you have any if you have anything to do if you want to set up an exchange if you just want to set up a brokerage or any other kind of company the most easy thing to do is basically buy a subscription to one of these tools. 네 그. 회사 같은 걸 설립하실 때 어, 가장 안전한 것은 이, 이러, 이런 표를 보시고 그거 그 녹색 관련해서 어, 그런 트랜잭션이 이루어진 회사 트랜잭션이 이루어진 것을 찾으시면 되겠, 되겠습니다. You can even do that with an API. Then you just scan every address that sends money to you. 통해서 하실 수 있고요. 예, 그래서 어드레스를 다 스캔하실 수 있습니다. And actually, it works very, very well. It's, it's basically it's a solution for banks. 네, 이거는 그 은행을 위한 솔루션이고요. 굉장히 어, 분명하다고 볼수 있겠습니다. And the one in the middle chain analysis is the most expensive one, but 중간에 있는 거는요, 가장 비싼 건데요. Every That's also the secret behind Bonk Freak. What they basically do is they take your address and screen it, and if you're green, you're green. Yeah, I mean, we, we heard it from Mr. Tanner and all the other people speaking. I mean, I just showed you a bit. We have the politicians, we have the knowledge, we have the people, we have the branding, we have Swissness here to basically become probably the globally strongest hub for blockchain tech and crypto assets. The only thing that is basically missing is like the involvement of the bank. 네, 그 스위스 같은 경우에요. 블록체인과 관련해서 어, 허브라고 보실 수 있겠습니다. 하지만 아쉬운 점은 어, 은행의 참여가 저조하다는 점이 있겠습니다. As I showed you before, there are already technical solutions out there. 
that could be very easily implemented if you actually want to solve the KYC AML problem. <coughs> so what, what, what kind of, of movement or what, how is the ecosystem basically changing? The saddest part that it's actually happening and there was again, I think, uh, an article yesterday in um, in the newsletter that Vaduz is competing with um, with with Sug is basically because Bank Frick seems to be the only bank that can do this stuff or is willing to do it. It's not a can; it's more as if you want to do it or not. So you have a lot of companies that basically have foreign bank accounts, which is a pity for Switzerland because we lose business. Yeah. 그 어제 기사에 나온 Well, the, the other thing is what basically happening is a lot of the blockchain companies turn to Amode and basically start buying old comp financial service company. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, just Coinbase, a unicorn, probably the, the well best well-known startup in, in that space in the last one month they basically bought three companies one was a, a regulated trading entity that they can trade anything so it doesn't matter if it's a utility or a security token they bought like basically a, a bank with a banking license that they can do custody because it doesn't matter that you have to fight or interpret if it's a security or utility token and they bought, bought the SEC regulated um, security deal that they can sell and talk about anything and it doesn't matter what's a utility or a security token. <laughs> because there was a lawyer before me talking, Mr. Hess, he was talking about all the regulatory stuff and then you basically have different kind of categories that you can either have a security. Well, that you either can have a security or a utility token. But, but that's more or less a cat and mouse game. Because what we already see happening, the, 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 the film mob tells you what you can do until what. And it's basically, if you, what's happening is not basically the process is getting better. So what is ha happening is the ICO process is changing. And I don't think the film is really aware of it. Just to put it very easy, before that, we, we, we had here the ICO, where it basically went public. And you had some pre-sales that's basically the same thing as a friend or thing. But that was like where it went public, let's put it that way. Sorry. <laughs> so, now what basically the film did is they gave a framework for that point. So, what we basically see in our daily business, we don't do it obviously, is the companies, they don't care about that part here, they just sell all the, all the money here. Or they go before that, they have some pre-pre-sales. So it's not actually the regulatory basically timing the crypto universe, it's just the crypto universe process changing according to the regulation. So, the problem is not really solved by the film of getting the framework, because now you see just most money raised in the pre-sale and not in the ICO. <laughs> No, no, it's sad. That's like what we always need to have the discussion of it. Can we solve the problem or not? And yeah, that was our old company. And, and also, what we in Europe saw, we have Token Pay. That's probably, I think, number 108 on Coin Market Capital Market. It's a blockchain company. They had the same problem with getting access to financial service, like a payment account stuff. What they basically did, what came, Coinbase did in the USA. They bought Wegbank, that's a German bank, where we basically are working with Buffin. Sorry. <laughs> I would put it a bit easier down. In Europe, you see the same thing. Token pay, it's the number 108 out of two, 3,000 blockchains. It's a big company. What they did, they had the same problem, no bank access. So they went to Germany and bought a bank. It's the Wegbank. So now we're working with the regulator there to get the approval that they can buy with their money. And they also invested in, in CoinLab Capital, a token Swiss company, basically, that they have, um, they have the, the service and the knowledge as well. 
그때 그 중간에 그 길리엄은 제가 잘 모르겠고요. <웃음> 그 뱅크 에세스가 실제 내에서 어렵기 때문에 회사들이 그, 그 어, 그 계좌를 오픈하는 과정을 실수 내서지 않고 뭐 독일이나 이런 이웃 나라로 향하고 있다는 점을 말씀하셨습니다. I mean, this is there is this nice quote more or less. I mean, understanding generally life is an easy way to not be fearful of stuff like that. So I think. That Switzerland basically can take all the potential that it generated with all the marketing stuff. We need to bring the bank to the point that they're not afraid to actually touch this new kind of technology, new kind of money. Because we all realize the technology is staying here, the asset class will stay here, and we will have a, a proper upright discussion about how we can make sure that the intent of the old regulation can be implemented on the new side. It's very hey. sad for, for, for me as a, as, as a former bank where you have a lot of regulation and all that stuff and now you basically see something that actually will make the life of regulator much easier, the, 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 the life of the taxman much easier, the life of, of, of every company involved much easier if the bank would, would, would just have a proper look at the technology and engage properly in the discussions. 네, 그 요약해서 말씀을 드리면요. 여기에 이제 기술도 있고요. 어셋도 있고요. 다 있긴 하지만 뱅크 그러니까 은행에서 그, 그 블록체인 관련해서 긍정적이지 있지 않기 때문에 이거는 좀 아쉬운 점이라고 볼수 있겠습니다. So then was it more or less from my part? So if you have any question regarding whatever that topic is some more related to crypto nation, crypto valley to the technology, to the regulatory framework, how to approach something, feel free to ask. Happy to help. 네, 크립토나 어떤 기술, 어떤 그 규제 관련해서 궁금하신 점이 있으시면 질문해 주시면 답변 드리도록 하겠습니다. 오케이, okay, thank you.